All right, so our lesson today is uh, section 7.5, solving trigonometric equations. So um, on our last test, if you guys remember, you had problems like this. And then you would use your unit circle to answer those questions. So today what you're doing is essentially the same thing. So you're gonna, they're gonna give you something like this and then you're gonna answer it. The only difference is that's not set up here. They're actually gonna give you an equation which you're gonna need to solve, simplify it, and then answer it. Now, solving your equations, um, there can be a little bit easy and then a lot harder. So for example, like when you solve the regular equation, this one e is easy to step, um, subtract four, divide by three. This one, this is a quadratic. So you have to move everything to one side and then you're gonna factor it out. So they're gonna do the same thing kind of with your trig functions. So these are gonna be either, you know, a couple steps and then a lot more difficult. Um, and then they're gonna say, well, I want you to tell me the answer for the principal values. Um, the principal values are going to be in certain quadrants. Oh, I don't want all of it, just in certain quadrants. And then they're gonna say, oh, give me the, um, all, the, all the possible answers. So that's like um, an infinite number of answers. So if you guys wanna write this part down, section 7.5, solving trigonometric equations, principal values. For sine and tangent, you're going to answer it in quadrants one and four. So that's between negative 90 degrees and positive 90. For cosine of x, if they ask for the principal values, your answer is gonna be between um, zero and 180 degrees. So quadrants one and two. If they want it for all, all real values, um, then they're saying, oh, okay, if this was like your answer was 30 degrees, then you also want it when it's um, 390 degrees, and like one rotation, two rotations. So you write it as x plus 360 degrees or in radians, and then tangent is x plus 180 degrees. So have those written down on your notes. I didn't write them down so that I could have more room. Let's get started. So this one says, solve for the principal values of x. Express your answer in degrees. So I'm gonna go back here. Here are my principal values. Just have them to help me out, remind me. Now, in a regular equation, remember, you wanna get rid of everything and solve for x. So ideally here, you wanna get rid of your extra things and have it in terms of sine or cosine or just get one trig function so that you know how to solve that. So your first step is to add one. Okay, so we're trying to solve for this. So our next step is divide by square root of two on both sides. So you have sine of x equals one over square root of two. The only problem is, is that you're not gonna find that on the unit circle, so you have to rationalize, and it's also bad math. Okay, so now I'm looking for where the sine is square root of two over two, in quadrants one and four. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm looking for sine and sine is your y value. So it's going to be at 45 degrees. That's it. Okay, next problem. Number two. Same thing, you wanna solve it. So your first step is subtract one. Solving for cosine of x, so you wanna isolate it. So your next step is
All right. So looking for your principal values, it says cosine is defined in quadrants one and two. So I'm only going to be looking at quadrants one and two. So where is the cosine um, negative one half? So cosine is going to be your x value between quadrants one and two, 120 degrees. So x is 120 degrees. All right, not too bad. So you can try this one on your own, pause it, and then check your answers. Um, add square root of two to both sides. Divide by two. And again, this was uh, checking all the principal values and answering in uh, degrees. So principal values for cosine is quadrants one and two. So where is it? Where is the cosine square root of two over two? So where's the cosine square root of two over two positive? So it has to be just 45 degrees. So x is equal to 45 degrees. Great. All right, next problem. For this one, it says solve for x for um, x is between 0 and 2 pi. So that means give me all the answers on the unit circle and don't give me the answer in degrees. Give me the answer in radians. If they wanted degrees, they would have said 0 to 360. So your answer has to be in radians. All right, and here's your equation. So this one's a little bit harder. Um, idea. So say we had x squared is equal to x. You're not going to divide by x because that's a variable and you would potentially eliminate one of your answers. What you would do is you would move the x to the other side. So you have x squared, don't write this down, x squared minus x equals 0. And then how do you solve this? Oh, you factored out x times x minus 1 equals 0. Set this equal to 0. Set this equal to 0. Zero product property and solve. Same idea here, except it's with your trig function. So what you're going to do is you're going to minus sine of x to both sides. Now, you can't solve that. You have to kind of combine it. So the idea here is that you're going to factor out a sine x. Well, sine x times what will give you a sine squared x? Sine x. Sine x times what will give you sine of x? So this is essentially factored, and it said equal to 0. So you're going to use a 0 product property that says, okay, well, if this times this is 0, then either this value has to equal 0, or this value would equal zero. Like a quadratic. Solve this, solve this. So here, you're looking at your unit circle and you're gonna say, okay, um, on my unit circle, where is the sine zero? Oh, okay, the sine is zero from zero degrees and 180 degrees. Oh wait, they didn't want it in degrees, they want it in radians. So zero radians and pi. So here, you could write it separate or together. So We still have to finish this one. So I have to add one to both sides. So on this one, where is the sine of x1? So where's the sine of x1? 
Okay, sine is the y value. So it's just at 90 degrees. My answer in radians has to be pi over 2. So your answer would be 0, pi, and pi over 2. Okay, so now the problems start getting a little bit more difficult. So in this case, way too many trig functions. So how do we isolate it? What do we get rid of? Well, if we notice there is a cosine of x in both of these. So if there's a cosine of x in both of these, we're going to try to factor that out. So we're going to say cosine of x. So cosine of x times what would give you sine x cosine of x? We'll just sine x. Minus cosine of x times what is going to give you negative one half cosine of x? So just. A one half. Okay, so now we have the zero product property. So either this is going to equal zero, or this is going to equal zero. So then we're going to solve it. So principal values again. I'm looking for this one. Okay. So um, cosine, I'm looking at just quadrants one and two. So where, and my answer is in radians. So where in quadrants one and two is the cosine zero? So where between quadrants one and two is the cosine zero? And cosine is gonna be your um, x value. So the cosine is zero at 90. Okay, 90 degrees, except it wants it in radians. So x is equal to pi over 2. Okay, so this next one, solve it. So I add 1 half to both sides. So the sine of x is equal to 1 half. Again, where um, principal values. So principal values for sine is on quadrants uh Sine is from 1 and 4, so where is, between 1 and 4 is the sine 1 half? So sine is 1 half. Okay. So it looks like it's going to be at 30 degrees, or in other um, terms, pi over 6. Next problem. So this one is actually a little bit confusing. So side note, imagine that you had um, 2x squared plus x minus 1. Okay, so like 2x squared plus x minus 1. This is a quadratic. Do you guys remember how to factor that? So... That would actually factor into like a 2x and an x and kind of play around with these. So that's going to be a minus 1 and a plus 1. So this would give you a 2x squared. This would give you a negative 1. If you were to FOIL this out, this would give you, well, let me just show you. Okay, so we're going to factor this. Okay, so how do you factor that? Same way. So it's going to be 2 sine of x, sine of x. So that would give you this. You know you need a 1 here. And in this case, it was a negative one and a positive one, so it's going to be the same thing. So you just factored that. Same idea like this. Set these equal to zero. So 
solve it. So now we're looking for this, and this is the same thing as we were still trying to do the, the principal values for this problem. So principal values for sine, I'm looking at quadrants one and four, and my answer we said was gonna be in radians. So where's the sine of x, one half between quadrants one and four? So one, three, Sine is going to be here. Okay, so that's for this one. So at 30 degrees, that is pi over 6. And where is the sine of x negative 1 between quadrants 1 and 4? The sine of x is at 3 pi over 2. One little thing, because it says it's between negative 90 and 90, it has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So if I wrote 3 pi over 2, that's not right, even though it's the same location. So your answer would be at negative pi over 2. So that's why where this comes into play um, in terms of how you write your answer. All right, so problem 7. Solve for x for um, x is between 0 and 2 pi. That means that they want your answers in radians. Your problem is cosine squared x minus cosine of x plus 1 equals sine squared of x. So this side looks good where like I could factor it, but then I wouldn't know what to do with this one. And you can't set it equal to zero or factor if it zero isn't on this side. So what I'm going to try to do is try to get change this in terms of cosine. So if you remember from your identities sheet, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one. If I had sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to one and I rearranged this and I solved it for sine squared, that means that Sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta, so I'm going to plug that in right there. And x, not theta. Um, keep this side the same. Okay, so now I have everything in terms of cosine. I want to move everything to one side and try to solve it. So from here, minus 1 from both sides, minus 1. Add cosine squared x to both sides. Well, where do I add it with the other cosine? Cosine squared plus cosine squared is okay. So I have it equal to zero. Now I'm going to try to use a zero product property, which means you're going to try to factor it. All right, so how can I factor this? Well, there's a cosine in both of these. So I'm going to factor out a cosine. So cosine of x times what would give me two cosine squared x? Well, I need a two and I need a cosine. Cosine of x times what will give me cosine of x? All right, so now it's factored. I'm going to use the um, zero product property and say cosine of x equals zero. Solve this one. All right, so now I'm looking at my unit circle. And it wants me to say, okay, 
anywhere on your unit circle, where is the cosine of x zero? So anywhere on your unit circle, where is the cosine of x zero? So I'm looking for the unit circle, cosine of x is zero here at pi over two and at three pi over two. So this one is at pi over two, three pi over two. All right, now I'm looking for this one. Where on the unit circle is the cosine of x one half? Well, cosine of x is one half at pi over three and five pi over three. All right, so this is the long lesson. So we have two more problems, number eight, number nine. Solve for x, where x is between zero and two pi. So here's your equation, similar to the last one. Um, don't like that one. So we wanna convert that in terms of sine. From our identity, we know this. So in this case, we're gonna solve it for cosine. If we were to solve this for cosine, that means that cosine squared theta is equal to one minus sine squared theta, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this right in here. So that's one minus sine squared theta. Keep this one the same. And again, it's x not theta. Okay, so we're gonna move everything to this side. So minus one, minus one, add sine squared x, add sine squared x. So sine squared plus sine squared is two sine squared. Minus sine x eliminated equal to zero. So now I'm looking at this and I'm trying to factor it. Well, what goes into both of those? Sine of x. So here you have, probably zoom in more. Sine of x times what will give you two sine squared x? Two sine x minus sine of x times what will give you sine of x? Okay, um, it's factored, set equal to zero, so you can use the zero product property. So set this one equal to zero, set this one equal to zero, solve it, okay. So now I'm looking at the unit circle and where on the unit circle is um, sine of x zero. And I want my answer in radians. So where on the unit circle is sine of x zero? So the sine is the y value, looks like here. And here, okay. So at zero radians and at pi radians. Also need to find where on the unit circle is um, the sine of x one half. So in this case, the sine is one half at pi over six and five pi over six. Okay, all right, finally, last problem, here we go. Solve for all real values of x. So for all real values of x, that's going to mean my answer is gonna look something like that. Okay, so let's see, I can't substitute anything. We should be able to recognize this. Ooh, that is the double angle formula. So going back, I should say that sine of two theta is equal to this. 
All right, so here we have that double angle formula, which is two sine theta, cosine theta. So I'm gonna plug that in instead. So this is going to be two sine, so I'm plugging that in for this, x cosine of x minus cosine of x equal zero. So now I'm trying to see what I can do with this. Well, it turns out that cosine is on both of these, so we're gonna factor cosine of x out. So cosine of x times what would give you this? Two sine of x minus cosine times what will give you this? One equal to zero. So now you're gonna set this equal to zero Solving this, so add one, divide by two. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at this. So cosine, I'm gonna look for my answer. So where's the cosine zero? Cosine is zero at 90 degrees. Cosine is also zero at 270 degrees. Um, it didn't say to give my answers in degrees or radians, so I'll, I'll just do degrees, but you could have done radians. If I do degrees, your answer is 90 and 270. Okay, because you know it's 90 and 270, and they want it for all real numbers, so then you're gonna say it is 90 plus 360 K that means like times one circle times another circle times however many so that's and then your other answer would be 270 plus if you did it in radians it would have been pi over 2 plus 2 pi and then 3 pi over 2 plus um, 2 pi Okay, degrees, radians. It didn't specify in the problem, so I'm leaving it this way. Next one, sine of x is one half. So looking here, where is the sine of x one half? Sine of x is one half at um, 30 degrees and then also at 150 degrees. So it is... All right, and that's it.